Facebook, welcome. Instagram, welcome. Viewers, welcome. This is episode two of the Entrepreneurs Recession Response Program, where I am speaking with the world's best entrepreneurs and investors to hone in on what has been the most challenging period of their lives, the most challenging period of their careers, and what did they do to best navigate it. This is a conversation that's going to be an ongoing conversation that is designed to shine a light at the time where the world needs it most to help you navigate times of unprecedented and extreme uncertainty. I am super excited about today's discussion. Uh, I am fortunate enough to be joined by two of my closest and dearest friends in the entire world, uh, Mr. Stuart Cook and Mrs. Samantha Cran. I'm just going to introduce each of these two uh, and then we will rock and roll. Uh, Samantha Cran. Samantha is a... Am I saying Samantha Cran or is it Samantha Cook? Okay, and there was an official name change because I feel like I've gone back and forth on this name change issue for a while. Look, it's just always Sammy C. Sammy C, it is. Sammy C was the CEO of a not-for-profit organisation called One Disease at a Time through which she drove incredible growth and incredible impact uh, around the world. She's been listed in uh, Australian Financial Review's 100 Women of Influence uh, and she is also a Formula E ambassador. Mr. Stuart Cook uh, is the previous CEO of Zambrero, which some of you may know, uh, which is a fresh mex chain that Stewie built from two stores to 100 stores over a period of five or six years. Uh, he has been a CEO across three continents. Uh, together, Stuart and Sam are investors in over uh, 12 high-growth companies, uh, and Stuart is on the board of the Entourage, and perhaps... Our biggest claim to fame is I was your best man at your wedding. Uh, and you didn't roast me. I got a very like, no. probably the nicest best man speech. If only I had my time again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Hopefully not. not. Yeah. Hopefully, correct. Hopefully not. Maybe an anniversary or something. I can yeah, uh, yeah, bring yeah. out the roastings. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you so much yeah, for the invitation. So. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So let's start at the top, right? Current environment, how are you guys seeing it? How are you guys approaching it? What's your mental model around what's happening at the moment? You want to go first? Um, am I still in a dream? Is this our current reality? Yeah, exactly. That, I think Crazy, that's hey? what it is for me. I, I'm still grappling with the fact that this is our, a new brave world that we're trying yeah. to discover as individuals in our personal life as well as the business world as well. Yeah, I, I like the meme that's going around is that whoever started playing Jumanji in Australia, can you please fucking stop? <laughs> we've had fire, we've had floods, we've had now disease, you know, yeah. Crazy times, so, crazy times. And Stewie, you and I have been sort of going back and forth for a couple of days on on how we see it and, and, and talking strategy and plans, both, both at a kind of economic level and an individual business level. Um, talk to us about how you, you guys see this playing out over the next three, six, 12 months and beyond. Okay. Uh, so I think it's very, firstly, it's really, really, really hard to predict because we haven't gone through a time like this. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm surrounding myself by, as I have my entire career with people who are smarter than me. And so I've looked at, yeah, like, a, um, and so that's every day. Um, but I think one of the things is, so I was speaking to a friend of mine who's in a superannuation fund, the big investment management vehicles, not only small business enterprises, but also people in government and cabinet and things like that. And so, you know, I do see that this is, um, you know, if we fast forward, I think we're going to be here till September. I think it's going to be a really big challenge. Um, the way that the government are handling it, um, probably at first wasn't quick enough, but I have to give it to SCOMO that they're doing incredibly well with moving quickly with stimulus packages. They're moving oh, really quick with the banks. Um, you know, for those who haven't, who've got investment properties or even their home mortgages, the banks are already allowing people to put things on hold for three months with furthering to six months. So it's almost like the entire world is going to go on freeze and move forward like three to six months. And so it is a little bit about survival for a lot of businesses during that time. Mm -hmm. But then there is also some other businesses that um, will thrive during that time. Past September, you know, some of my smart friends say that, you know, the world would be in really big trouble and the government wouldn't allow that to 
happen. And so if they if it does get to that stage, it might be just really enforced lockdown measures for those who are quarantined, almost sticking them military personnel out the front of it just to make sure that people abide by quarantine measures mm -hmm. um, just so the economy can start to build up again. Um, you know, one of our investments, I'm the chairman of uh, the board of a company called Fitstop, amazing company. We've got 30 gyms. We even opened up two on Saturday mm -hmm. to then find out on Sunday that all the all 30 gyms had to close the next day. Um, so we're having to make big pivots on that business and we'd already sold another 30 franchises. So, you know, a high growth company prepping for growth has just been hit, but, you know, the senior leadership team have done an amazing job so far and the franchise partners have all banded together. So, and I think, I think to that point actually as well, it's during these times of adversity that we can really see, I guess, the true definition of an individual's character come through. Yeah. And the response so far that we've had internally with the businesses that we're involved with, um, I guess more so from a either consulting client standpoint or some of our own businesses, is that people are willing to join you to sacrifice, to do whatever they possibly can to help the, I guess, the, the business stay afloat, keep the vision intact and keep other consumers engaged with the brand as well. Um, I mean, you can speak to the point with um, pit stop with when yeah. they had to announce some of the when they had to, staff yeah. cuts. Yeah. That what people were willing to do to stay on board to ensure that we can see this, you know, to the end. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, and I think the good thing, the only sort of positive about this is like compared to the GFC, it was a whole bunch of bankers who were the baddies who had committed fraud, and um, there was and someone it, to blame. There was someone to blame. Whereas this is something that we're all fighting against um, together as, so I think that, that this should build us together as long as times don't get too desperate. Yeah, that's a conversation I've been having with my entourage members quite a fair bit over the last couple of weeks, have, helping them navigate uh, what's already happened and, and, and more so what's, what's, what's to come, which is it's a very different world as we saw in Entourage in 2016. It's a very different world when your business is in distress and the economy's fine and everybody else is booming and life's going on as normal, but your company's in distress. That's a very different scenario to the entire economy is affected, the ATOs coming to the party, the government are taking very intelligent, uh, very effective, very efficient measures. Um, soon, I think we'll see some stuff around either, either government enforced or economically enforced from landlords. Uh, there's understanding from suppliers, there's different, uh, you know, as we've already seen different regulations in terms of um, giving directors the ability to trade whilst insolvent and not becoming personally liable for the duration of this period around that. We're seeing, you know, statutory demand, which is obviously the instrument that businesses or, or creditors issue, a, uh, issue another business in order to say, look, we need you to pay us within 21 days or we're going to wind you up. That's now become six months. You've now got six months to respond to that. And so given that everybody is in this together and everybody is acting accordingly, particularly the government, the banks, the ATO, I think a lot of business owners can take comfort in that, right? And, and, and not just take comfort in that, but utilise all of the different things that are available. You know, Stuart, I think you said something, you know, the, the, the economy is going to sleep. I look at it as like it's going to be an economic coma for the next three, six months, whatever it might be. And so in, in a... In a business as usual environment, let's say your business is coming right down and it's, and it's in serious distress, usually you need to pull the pin. In this environment, you may not actually need to do that. You may be able to put the business into a coma and come out the other side uh, and continue building. Yeah, and, the, and I think the only the caveat with that will be well, like one of the biggest packages that are yet to come through is those who have physical retail locations that are now forced to shut. Mm -hmm. So with our gyms... Um, yeah. We do hope that um, the landlords will come to the party or the economic stimulus will be there so that all of our franchise partners can actually, in, um, you know, say this very inverted commas, like enjoy that or be able to survive that coma period because yeah. they don't have that, the biggest cost of their business. So if you're a cafe or a restaurant now and you've got a quarter million dollar lease and you have zero revenue, like if, unless you get rental relief, you were done. So that if, unless they want every cafe and restaurant to go under for the next two years, yeah. um, they need they will need to do something about the that with beauticians, gyms, restaurants, you know, 
that is a that's a that's a big one that's yet to be addressed. And I think it's I think it's also a mutual understanding between businesses that operate, um, you know, hand in hand. So another example to your point, um, talking about the food retail space, you know, we still have some very um, very big companies. You, you're probably a little more up to date on on the stats, but. Um, last I heard that still some of the delivery companies were still charging the same rate that they would for deliveries of food when now this is the only channel that these restaurants can actually use mm -hmm. to sustain their business model. So mm -hmm. I, I would hope that some of these large organizations who maintain a client base on their platform and mm -hmm. they know that they have the power of that would also come to the table to ensure that other businesses who you know, really, if we think about those delivery companies, they wouldn't exist if it weren't for those restaurant groups. So, you know, as long as, again, I want to highlight that we as individuals are meeting together in a compassionate way and fully appreciating the fact that we are in this together. And if I'm going to have to make a sacrifice in one area, I hope that you would do the same for the good of everybody. Yeah. Very Thank well said. James McCarthy on... Uh... Facebook just asked about the insights on landlord rent situation. I think that it was being discussed on Tuesday. There was no announcements, but we are expecting something this week. Um, that's per scomo. Yeah. Yeah. And if I was looking to a crystal ball there, I would say I, I, I am very confident the government is going to do something about this yeah. uh, for the exact reason that you guys mentioned uh, a moment ago, which is if they don't, every business that's going into shutdown will need to close its doors and they're going to do everything they can to avoid that from happening. So I think you'd be optimistic there. On the off chance that the government don't, I mean, I can't see this happening, but on the off chance that doesn't, I mean, landlords are going to need to play ball. Okay. Yeah. Again, and this is one of the big things. Because, because they've, been, they've got financing from the banks, the bank is giving every business lend, business um, loan six month hiatus. So therefore they should be able to pass those costs down. So yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and again, this comes back to what we we're talking about before in terms of if it's just your business that's distressed, but the rest of the economy is fine, your landlord would be like, you can't pay rent. Okay, we're evicting you and you're going to be held liable for the remainder of your lease for the term of the lease. And we're going to pursue you for that. But right now, it's, they're, they're not going to kick anybody out because there's no, it's not like there's another cafe that's going to move in next week. You know what I mean? And so, and I think actually, very un Australian. Very in Australia and 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 uncommercial, right? Because they they are going to want a tenant uh, that when the shutdown stop, they're going to want a tenant there. They've got a tenant there, and it, and there is no commercial benefit to kicking out an existing tenant only to bring one in down the track. And so again, I, I it's one paradigm shift. I think um, anybody watching, anybody listening, can can take comfort in and should utilize to the best of your ability is truly understand we are not in a BAU and we're not in a business as usual environment anymore. And so play the angles as they exist now. Don't play the angles as we've known them up until three weeks ago. Yeah. Team, the question I'm asking each person that comes onto this show is what's the biggest challenge of your career? I mean, knowing the breadth and depth of your investments and your business activities. I'm going to ask the question this way. Is right now the, the most challenging component of, of your career to date? Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say it is if you look at it all, but I, I can also probably other remember times before. I mean, but I'm far more well adapted and uh, I've got more knowledge and you know, we, we are sitting at a different comfort level. Whereas, uh, you know, when we were very early days with Zambro and startup and you know, my bookkeeper didn't do the ATO payment the correct way. We were submitting BAS statements, but not paying BAS. And I got a call and I remember exactly where I was and we didn't have the money to pay the ATO. I didn't even know what ATO payment plan was back then. That's probably like the worst emotional reaction time in my entire life. I couldn't life. agree more. I'm so glad you did this. But, but I mean, like the magnitude of the challenges that we're facing right now is yeah. definitely probably the 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 hardest and I fact I think it's also the fact that it's such a you know multifaceted front like yeah you know every aspect of our lives has been touched whether it's your work front your personal front you know your your fitness the fact that I can't go to a, a yoga studio or like you yeah. know all every mm. single of public transport so mm. you know, we are in our little um self-isolated zones being home now um but it's also really exciting to see okay, it's either pivot or, pa pivot or perish. So I think in these circumstances, mm. seeing how some of these businesses are going, okay, you know, we're all in the same boat. 
how can I continue my services to my loyal followers? And what I'm loving is that people are, you know, cutting some slack. We, you know, we're doing some of the gym classes on on Facebook Live yeah. because that's the only platform that we've got at the moment. But gym members are like, yep, sweet, that's fine. They're excited yeah. by that. We actually um, had the largest turnover on, we had the largest attenders, I think, to year of our FitStop members. We've got 5,000 mm -hmm. FitStop members. We had the largest single attendance on Tuesday morning, the day after the shutdown, as a shine of sign of faith in community, everything, which was just uh, like amazing to watch. And so. look, it's not like the most professional, you know, there's no lighting, there's no this, there's no that, but that's not what's required for now. now. For now. You know, yeah. I think for now, I think what what a lot of um, any of consumers or, or any of the loyal followers are kind of banding together and they're excited by being part of the journey. Yeah. That's why I think, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be high polished. It's like get to get out to the market as quick as you can in the circumstances that you're in. Consumers will forgive you for that because we are in the same boat. Um, and I think as long as you can have them on the journey with you as well, we'll all get through it. I mean, this is this is this is a global scale. Humanity needs to pull together. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's some of the beauty that I'm I'm seeing in these circumstances, both yeah. personally and professionally. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I love what you guys are saying around the the magnitude of the challenge is greater yet the emotional reaction is, is a lot more balanced than, than particularly the, what the three of us may have been, you know, 2016 or 2011 or 2013, uh, which I think is a huge lesson for everybody out there. I'm looking at this, uh, this is a global classroom on uncertainty. This is a global classroom on adversity right now. And everybody is going through such a challenging period. And, and with that comes more resilience. And so while the magnitude of change that we're all seeing um, you know, those of us that have been in business for 10 or 15 years, we're seeing now that the magnitude is greater, but our emotional reaction, like, is, we don't have an emotional, re there is no emotional reaction almost. I mean, our heart goes out to those that are affected by it, but in terms of emotional reaction around protecting our businesses or whatever, um, you do build that resilience the more you go through great challenge. Um, there's a really good question coming through from Hamanchi that I want to address. I might start with you on this one, Sammy. She says, uh, Sammy and Stu, you've invested in some travel companies. What are your insights on the travel industry and any tips to stay alive? She follows up by saying, how long do you think it will take for the travel industry to bounce back? I mean, where, yeah, even even for us personally, I mean, for us, we were due to have our biggest weekend um, in short-term rentals. We've got most of our properties Um so we've got a business called Native Travel, and that's out in the desert where Coachella Valley is. In California, in the US. Yeah, and for us, um, Coachella is the biggest weekend, and obviously um, it's being moved. We get 60% um, of our profits for the year in one month, and that month was gone. So it went from being 60% profits to a loss. So we'd actually survive the down season as well. So, yeah. And interestingly, you know, a, a, a bit of a silver lining that came out of that. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to balance some of my answers with, yes, I acknowledge the negative, but I also want to highlight mm. some positive Beautifully stories so. that are coming off the back of this. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go directly to answering the question properly. But um, with so many cancellations happening, um, and obviously the policy that went through um, Airbnb was to, to, um, obviously give, give yeah give all the refunds um which was difficult for us but an interesting mm. thing in terms of consumer behavior to see was that that weekend passed and all of a sudden uh, obviously we dropped our prices so that it is um more uh, of interest to individuals mm. um what we noticed is that we had a trickle in of bookings slowly but surely and it was interesting it was almost like this tipping point where quarantine and isolation uh, measures were co were coming in and the booking started happening more and more and we were thinking what is going on and the feedback that we were getting is that you know if i'm gonna have to be stuck in isolation i may as well do it in a big home with a pool great air conditioning and take my family on a staycation mm -hmm. um and i think just being able to then really really pivot quickly again and try and tap into that market with the way that we were marketing, uh, marketing the way we were uh, getting in touch with those individuals um, and trying to make the best out of this situation. I mean, it's a home away from home. 
Um, and I thought that was a really that was a good pivot. Yeah, it was I mean, a great pivot that. from that perspective. But I mean, if you, it depends on what travel. To answer that question, I think it yeah. depends on what travel business. You, you know, we've got um, friends of ours who, you know, who book cruise liners, and you know, you probably cruise liners. I think I'd be, I'd be hesitant to say that they're not dead, like for the next few years. And so there's going to be some typical areas of travel, depending on where you are, that you might need to pivot completely. Like one of the one of the other groups that we know um, have pivoted to uh, do the quarantine special type thing. We're doing delivery gro- to grocery, um, deliver groceries to people who don't want to leave the house and a whole bunch of that. So they're actually moved away from their entire core business. But I mean, if you're wor- working in hospitality right now, like one of my mates closed up two of his restu- two of his bars and another mate of mine closed seven restaurants and had to let go of 300 staff like mm-hmm. this week. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it might be as crazy as going and trying to look at completely new revenue streams. And what I also look at is that what does your, what does your customers have in your customer database have in common with another industry that is going to be actually thriving during this time. And so if I'm looking at and going like and breaking down, okay, are they, um, are they high socioeconomic? Are they low socioeconomic? What's the the skew of male to female? And how can I somehow monetize that, that list or that consumer base and pivot very quickly to something that is going to make me help me survive for the next six months? Because I do think it's at least a six month, um thing yes i'd be preparing for that and if it's better than that that's okay and then you yeah. can go back to business as usual but i'd be i would i would say to all of the people out there is that you're kidding yourself to think business is going to go back to normal mm-hmm. or you shouldn't be planning for business not to go back to normal earlier than september yeah My- yeah i agree for, for, for planning purposes for strategic purposes for cash flow purposes strap in for six months and if, and if it's better than that then um, that, that'll be upside. I mean, one of the things that might help all of those watching is from, from my position and the position of the entourage, for us, it's about at any given moment, it's how do we best serve and enable business owners to survive and thrive in their businesses um, across the world? And so in looking at how do we best do that over the next six months, my thought was, yes, we're all going to be affected, but we're all going to be affected differently. And so we need different categories to think of how different industries and how different businesses are going to be effective. And so the four categories that I sort of am now looking through in a, as a mental model at the business landscape, you've got as a result of this virus and the economic uh, consequence of it, you've got businesses that are going to be booming, right? If you're selling hand sanitizer, um, if you are offering uh, any sort of digital services that people can consume at home, you're going to see a boom as a result of it. There's businesses that are doing well, so that might get a slight uplift as a result of what we're going on. Uh, There's businesses that will be challenged, right? And then there's businesses that will be seriously distressed. Restaurants, cafes, gyms, all that sort of stuff. And it's important to to make the distinction, particularly if, if, if this is your first period of, you know, navigating, if you're in that challenge basket, just understand that you may not be fully and seriously distressed. It, it may not be a conversation of do you need to close the doors. It might just be a period of how do we navigate challenge and get you to the point where you're doing well. Mm-hmm. But not everyone will face the same degree of um, uncertainty and not everyone will face the same degree of crisis point. Let's talk in terms of um, what... Is, so with that said, because you guys... The reason I wanted to cover that is you guys have some businesses that are in the distressed category, gyms and restaurants. You've got some businesses that are in the challenge category and you're actually moving one of the businesses that would have been challenged or distressed into a, a pivot that's going to see, see you do well over the next six months. So from a commercial perspective, for the business owners that are watching this, what are you guys doing and what have you been doing over the last two weeks? And, and if it takes you half an hour to answer this question, then take half an hour. But what have you been doing over the last couple of weeks um, to ensure your businesses survive and thrive? Yeah. I think first and foremost is just the simple realization that every day is a new day. I mean, there is there is every single day when you turn on the news, you're listening to a podcast, something has changed. And I think, you know, it can be so unnerving and very uncomfortable, but you have to try and get comfortable with this new reality. So I think that's first and foremost, is that we've just 
resided to the fact that this is the reality. This this may be going, you know, we all thought that it would be going for a month or, you know, yeah, it yeah, keeps exactly. changing. So we exactly. have to keep adapting quickly. Yeah, but um, I think one of the, the interesting ones, which Jack was uh, alluding to is, is that we we were just uh, we hadn't even announced it. We we're about to announce it on social, probably as Corona hit. Um, but we've we've decided to launch a new brand brand new business called Bite Size Innovations, which is conveniently um, bringing plant based, um, amazingly dish delicious food to billions. Um, you know, Sam and I we could go for a long long time uh, talking about this, but you know, traveling around the world and and seeing the impact of animal agriculture on the environment and also we and also both of our experiences we wanted to our next big play and a play that's going to come over the next decade for us will be um bite size innovations and looking at all different plant-based um different proteins and um taking them to the market um in a convenient way so we've got two arms of the business one is a creating our own beyond meat or impossible burger type um meat alternative, meat alternative with the partnership with the university of sydney so we've just finished a capital raise for that um, that's going incredibly well. And so again, when you've got a, a few scientists and industrial engineers who are work, chemical engineers who are working on that product in the confines of a lab, that's not impacted at all. But then we've also got Flav and Flav is an interesting one. So that was going to be a fast casual restaurant chain. Yeah. Um, all, and if, all 100% plant-based yeah. um, due to launch August. We're in the discussions with Elise. Um, oh, in God. a quarter million dollar lease a year, right in prime location in Bondi. Just to give context, the 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 goal and the vision there was pre Corona at least a, a thousand restaurants across. Was it five years? Uh, a thousand restaurants over the next ten years. A thousand uh, restaurants over ten years. So so that yeah. was bricks and mortar, roll out the leases. You guys, uh, you know, I, we were talking about that in Bali. Yeah, two New Year's ago. So that's that's 15 months in the making and you've been seriously running at it for the last six to nine months. And that's kind of, that was just getting lift off. And now you've really had to pivot the whole thing to be more uh, delivery focused. Yeah, yeah. This, this business for us, this was our legacy play. Yeah. You know, as Stuart mentioned, we've been fortunate enough to travel and we've seen you know, the beautiful landscapes. And then we've also been confronted with some, um, I guess, circumstances where it makes you realise that, you know, this this planet that we live in and Mother Nature needs to be sustained for the future. Mm. And also we've experimented quite heavily on a personal front with our own eating habits. Um, and we believe that through this business, we can activate you know true positive change um through the celebration of food and i mean we eat three times a day so we were living and breathing this as you said for the last 15 months and all of a sudden yeah you know your About whole to sign world yeah. just gets turned upside down and um, so yeah so two sundays ago so before the we could see that it was definitely going to go worse and one of my advisory board members she's in, based in shanghai so you know, we speak to her every week and so we're following what's been happening in china and then as soon as the cases started to appear here we knew quickly that um it was going to get far worse when you've got a sometimes benevolent dictatorship in china actually does work for things like this when you've got a population who will follow procedures quarantine not all run down to bondi beach because they think they've got a day off um so we definitely are of the opinion it's going to be worse in australia than it was in china um, and so we made the decision a little bit earlier than others to pivot to delivery. So as of last Monday, um, we told the team, hey, guys, by the way, you signed up to be a um, be a restaurant chain and help build that. But we're pivoting and we're doing meal delivery. And so as of next Monday, uh, so Flav is the main brand, but we've created a sub brand called Flav Runner. So uh, flavrunner.com.au, little a little, uh, little, little, plug little, there. little plug there. Mind you, Let's please. Do it again. Flavrunner.com.au. Please, please be very kind. Our website literally went um, up this morning. just went up this morning. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but fuck, that's the point, right? That's, that's, exactly. that's the lesson. Like for all of those watching, like these guys did this pivot nine days ago yeah. from going full steam ahead with a full food retail uh, concept. 
uh, to now having a MVP website up and live. Yeah, and now with that web- website, we've only got the subscription. So just enter your email if you are interested, um, and then we'll we'll keep information coming up. Literally day by day as things yeah, are so, progressing. So in the last nine days, we've told the team, we've found a manufacturing facility that's HACCP certified. We've made sure that they had the right equipment. Um, we're now doing thermometer checking twice a day to ensure that none of the team are uh, testing positive for COVID. And we, I think just on that point, Stuart, for those of for those of you that aren't in the, the food retail space, a HACCP kitchen is a standard kitchen. I mean, this is... This is so airtight that when we arrive, as Stuart said, we get our uh, temperature taken. We then have to remove all of our clothes because they get washed. And naked. Um, we're then given safety um, safety <laughs> clothing to wear during this process. So it is completely sterile from the kitchen to the packing um, as well as the hands-off um, delivery, delivery drop-offs as well. So that's what I think it's really important to explain what HACCP Kitchen is. Um, mm. And because we are in the, the food production, like pre, pre, pre-ready, pre-made meals, essentially. Yeah. Mm. And so again, and then what we also did is like we looked at, um, and I think during this time as well, like I'm on the board of uh, Oz Harvest, the um, food rescue charity venue innovation arm. And so uh, the innovation arm is designed to help provide enough revenue eventually to fund Oz Harvest so it's more reliant on uh, corporate donors or um, fundraising it's, efforts. It's essentially social impact investing. So they're raising yeah. the funds so that Oz Harvest can be sustainable and not so reliant and, on yeah. philanthropy. And, and building a social impact businesses. And so what we've decided to do with our pivot as well with Flav Runner is we've actually Oz Harvest this Monday just gone was meant to have their big fundraiser for um, the CEO, CEO cook-off, cook-off where they raise two to three million dollars a year and it's a big portion of their budget that is completely gone now. So there's a lot of people out there who are, who are going to go without if they don't seek funding alternatively. And so what we've decided to do is actually use their fleet of vans after hours to be able to then go and deliver the food to be able to give them additional revenue stream and what as well means, as keep the drivers employed. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think that's a really important thing here. You know, so many industries we are experiencing hardship and layoffs um, of stand downs and you know we cannot forget the people that need i guess some services um like like some of our community members that oz harvest serve you know we can't forget about those individuals as well they need to keep eating so by us partnering with oz harvest that ensures that not only are their drivers still in a job but we're also looking at ways to be able to help um, you know, the, the broader community with the meals that get served through Oz Harvest, the business itself. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's such a good example. I mean, had you guys have had Flav have not have pivoted, it probably would have been in that distress category. But now, now you've pivoted and there'll be some challenges with that. And 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 if if, if the delivery ex- execution goes well, then, then you're moving into that, you know, performing well category. If, if we shift gears and look at... Um, uh, you know, gym business or another business that is in that distressed, distressed category. Um, what are the kinds of things that you guys have been thinking through over the last couple of weeks? I mean, you know, um, pivoting product and service delivery, cash management, headcount. What, what, what are some of the, um, yeah, I mean, what, what's a bit of a mental checklist that you've been going through over the last couple of weeks to ensure that those that are, that are distressed uh, will be as best as they possibly can be. Yeah, you're sitting and you're, you're far, forecasting daily. Yeah. Like every single day you should be looking at those numbers. Um, every day things have changed, new policies are coming in, there's, you know, different um, you know, grants or um, yeah. well, a stimulus through the government. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can find a partnership or an alignment with other industries as well, other businesses, again, what Stuart said, you know, you may be in your own silo, but there's another business that's doing this. How can you together um, have a partnership? So because things are changing so rapidly, you need to be in front of those numbers yeah. every single day. Do not put your head in the sand when mm. it comes to this. You have that's to, con- yeah, you have to confront this yeah. daily. Yeah. So, I mean, I like our company over in California, I'm on the, I'm on a call, but we're both on a call every morning with them at 6.30 AM. And we've got a daily updates from yesterday, 
what's happening. We're looking at our numbers, cancellations, action items, and just bringing that team along for the journey. I think the biggest lesson for this, and I mean, it's a little bit too late, but we've, I mean, we've got Twire Capital, which is our corporate advisory and investment business. And so, I mean, we've definitely got some clients of ours who are in that really distressed stage. And so the biggest, the ones who are doing the best out of all of this, the ones who have built very strong, they understand their business and their financial model really, really strongly. Um, it's the ones who um, are just getting to that and doing it now in a time of crisis, it's a lot harder to be able to work out what levers to pull um, in order to make the right decisions. And it can just be quite frenetic otherwise. So the biggest, you know, even though, you know, even though some companies think it's just a nice to have when things are going incredibly well, with our investments, I'm, you know, we've partnered our part business partner in Twire Capital is our old CFO at Zambrero, Ryan Barnes. And so he's going in, has gone in and he's been in crisis meetings with a number of all the businesses, even the good ones, and re-forecasting, looking at best worst case scenarios and like what are the key drivers. And you know that at certain points, so we knew that like with the gym business, we'd already had emergency board meeting like two or three weeks ago. And we already had, this is what we think the situation is. Situation A is going to be, it's going to be a slowdown. Gyms are still going to be open, um, but um, there might be cut half the members. But we also had a scenario planned out for what happens if all the gyms were to close for three months and what would happen if it, the gyms were to close for six months. We thought the six month thing was very far fetched, but it actually turned into reality. But we knew, so it meant that we weren't panicked. We go, hey guys, we all agree it's such a scenario number three. Yep. Okay. We got on a board call. We made some tweaks and then we acted on that action plan. Mm -hmm. So that's where we got to not have bigger shocks because we thought about all the, the negative things could possibly happen. Um, and, and we had built plans for them. And I think during this stage as well, depending at what size your business is at, um, you know, how, how solid your, your own, um, I guess, finance models are, there is no shame in ever asking for help. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, both Stuart and I are leaning so heavily on our mentors. Yeah. Um, we are calling people in the same industry, different industries, because, you know, what we're experiencing here, other people may be experiencing, despite that it's a different industry, but there's learnings that are cross-functional. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think the biggest thing I can suggest is, like I said, don't put your head in the sand. Um, do have regular conversations, not only with your um, customers, your team, but you know your friends and um, I guess your mentors around you as well. And, and the other one as well, just to add to that, so is have people with a difference of opinion to your own. Yeah. I think that's a big one as well, because if you're believing that this is going to be done by June and you're surrounding yourself by everybody who believes it in June, you're not going to come up with a, a different idea of what it could look like if it was in September. And so it's that sort of like why board diversity or mentor diversity is really important because they, you, they can think of things that you didn't even think about. And you're like, oh, holy shit, if that was to happen, I'm going to be dead. So at least now I've got a plan for it. So I think that that diversity of thinking is really, really important in this time and get talks to some older people as well. Yeah. Like they've been, they've been through things like this yeah. at times. Um, but another one as well that don't be afraid to also bring your team along on this journey. I think that's the biggest one. I think so, transparency is important. Yeah. And people all know, like, you know, Qantas laid off, I don't know, two thirds of its workforce the other day. Um, you know, a friend of mine, uh, one of my mentors had, he's on a board that let go 1700 workers. So you know, the unemployment rates going up, people are afraid, but if you bring them on and tell them how good it is or how bad it is, that's okay. Because you, you'll find that all of them will suddenly start to think like a business owner. And I wish that they always had mm. before, but through these times of crisis, they're going to act faster and work better than they ever before. Actually, that's such a good point. You're put really in these set of circumstances where all of a sudden you have to become the most resourceful that you've ever been I, like in we're, so we're, many different like aspects launching, of your life. We're launching Flavor Runner in two weeks. I'm like, what the fuck have I been doing my entire life? And we've just basically launched the business in two in weeks. Two weeks. Like, why didn't I have that sense of urgency before? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many gifts that come out of it. Back to the point around scenario planning. You, you're absolutely right. I mean, 
coming into periods like this with solid forecasts in play undoubtedly helps, right? Because you can see the future and therefore you can amend the future. For those of you that are amending your forecasts or or you're needing to build them from afresh and, and run out different scenarios into the future to get a little bit of visibility around that, sometimes a framework can help really well, right? And so how I've always viewed this and how we view this at the entourage is every business has six elements, right? Every business, there's a workflow to every company and um, generally speaking, that workflow, that production line goes through six elements. So there's marketing, we go out and we generate interest and attention. Uh, that interest and attention walks through the door in, in the case of a gym, literally, in the case of any other business, maybe metaphorically. We turn that interest and attention into a paid customer, so that's sales, right? We then need to deliver the product or service, it's product and product development and delivery. Uh, we need to operationalize as we go up the growth curve. So operations is the fourth element. We then count and manage the money, which is finance. And the sixth element is the element that brings all of those initial five to light and to life, uh, which is people, right? So you've really got marketing, sales, product development and delivery, including service development and delivery for your service-based business, uh, operations, finance, and people. And so if you're scenario planning, think through those six lenses. Think through the lens of marketing and sales. If on a good scenario, how many customers do we expect to attract over the next six months? On a bad scenario, how many customers do we expect to attract over the next six months? On a really bad scenario, how many customers will we attract over the next six months? That will then inform what you need to do around product or service development and delivery. It will inform what you need to carry by way of operational resource and people. And then that will inform your overall people strategy and all of those inputs can then coalesce into the output, which is your financial forecast, right? And so if you're thinking through those six lenses, it will ensure you're thinking holistically and it gives you a framework to accelerate uh, some of that thinking. Yeah. Literally my life right now, this period will show the depths of our capabilities. It is so good. I know it doesn't feel like a team, but for the, all the entrepreneurs and business owners watching, you will become better over the next six months than you have over the last 20 years. Yeah. Hey, Jack, can you press uh, request? Um, our phone nearly died. No, ah, uh, Mariah, can you, uh, they've come off Insta, so we need to accept them back onto the live. Okay. All righty, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, last couple of questions. What, what are, I mean, there's always hundreds of gifts and hundreds of lessons that come out of this period. What have been the top ones for you guys so far, quickly? Uh, lessons or gifts, did you say? I view lessons as gifts, so either or. I'd love to have been sitting on a little bit more cash right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be some good, good buying opportunities. Mm. Damn. Um, but in terms of lessons and gifts for you guys, like right now, like, what it just to your point earlier, Sammy, some some of the silver lining stuff. If you were to draw some positive thus far, what would it be? In these sort of circumstances right now. I you know, I think as isolated as what as what we are literally, I think people are the closest they've ever been. Mm. You know, I am noticing on so much of my um, like social media feeds and Instagram stories, like people are doing, you know, six way phone conversations. And um, yes, I understand that usually we'd go up, we'd go out and catch up like over an activity or over dinner. But now, and I guess Stuart and I experienced a little bit this as, as well, like the first four years of our marriage, um, two of those years we did long distance. Mm. In communication where, you know, it's, it's only a screen I can look at or on a, on a phone, the quality of that conversation was so much better. You know, I could tell immediately by the tone of his voice, the type of day that he had. So I think whilst we can be, you know, physically together and enjoy each other's company, when you do have that distance, it forces you to listen. Yeah. It forces you to engage on a different level that you may not have had before. And I think that is deepening our relationships. I love that. Well said, Sammy. Mm. I'm not sure I can follow that. <laughs> and I think that's deepening relationships in so many different areas. It's, you know, between your family, between your friends, between your colleagues and a sense of camaraderie that's coming off the back of this, yeah. um, as well as with your customers, you know, keep, keep them on the journey. 
you know, live and breathe these experiences together. Um, you know, don't be shy to, to pick up your uh, pick up the phone from your customers and call them. Ask them, how are they going? Is there anything else that I can do for you? Yeah. You know, in those set of circumstances, I think they'll be relieved in knowing, hey, they're not just here to serve me from a business standpoint in whatever that relationship was before, but they actually care about me as an individual. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think that that's a really important point. And it's not, I haven't definitely been perfect in this time. Like, we've definitely been hit really hard on a few things. Like, really, like some days we just felt like being punching bag for life. Um, and so, uh, but then I think also is it definitely take the time, look through your phone, phone list and go, who are people who are really hurting in this time and reach out to them because there's probably always going to be someone who's doing it worse than you. Um, and they're going to feel very alone. Um, and so, yeah, to Sam's point, I think that's a really important gift um, and something that I'm learning just a simple phone call or a text to somebody can really make, make a, a massive difference because that's happened to me by a few people. And I'm like, I've almost burst into tears on a couple of days. And I'm like, I, I really needed that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that, but I think the, I think that, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just think that a, just surrounding yourself by a lot of people with diverse backgrounds at this time, having little groups of people, whether or not, you know, the, again, the entourage, I'm lo looking at your videos every day. I'm looking at Tim's videos of, you know, going on the own of the portal every now and then, because there are like really good snippets of information for every time. I may not agree with every single video I watch every single time, but I'm always getting a different point of view and I can be deploying it in a different way and it's just adding to the, my strength from to be more resilient during this time 100 and actually i'm just going to add um jack i think sometimes we just need to to celebrate particularly in these circumstances just the simple pleasures and joys in life i mean sometimes we get so caught um caught up in our day-to-day -day, you know going to the office and then you know coming back home you know this is the first time that we've had well, we're forced to be at home. And if you're thinking about individuals who have families, um, you know, I've been listening to a lot of um, the BBC News podcasts and it's, it's quite fascinating to hear these very professional individuals maintaining their interviews with kids screaming <laughs> in the background. Right, good. So it's test, testing time from a parenting oh, standpoint, getting really creative with all of a sudden, not only are they a parent, but they're also the, the teacher and the enforcer in the household. But also, when would we ever get that time again? Yeah. So, you know, yes, we're stressing out at our laptops and we're being, you know, little warriors, key, keyboard warriors trying to solve the world's problems. But here we have these little faces looking up at you that would otherwise usually be at school and maybe maybe just step away and build that indoor cubby house. Like take, take for granted the fact that this is probably the closest your family is going to ever be when we go back to normal we're, we're yeah. building cubby houses here and we haven't even got kids like, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me and i should come over yeah. <laughs> i mean i I, if, I couldn't agree more sammy with what you're saying um for me as somebody who is a massive introvert and who you know for the last probably 12 years has really um learned to pause and whether it's blue mountains, whether it's at home, whether it's meditating, whether it's a week away uh, and, and, and really developed muscle around utilizing those times to help me be better and to help me build. I mean, right now what we're seeing is kind of that on scale, right? It's, it, and if anything, it's highlighting just how much we get caught in the busyness and there's always the next event and the next party and the dinner and the wedding and the 900 business meetings the next day. And, and it's this, you know, it's this kind of uh, mouse wheel, right, of, of never ending events. And so it's like the whole world is pausing and taking a deep breath for a moment. Um, and I think that as far as personal well-being, as far as mental health, as well as, you know, individuals elevating their consciousness, it's a really good invitation uh, to 
find strength in the pause and find strength in the stillness. Couldn't agree yeah. with you more. I, I do agree. The only challenge I'll have to you guys is that um, there, will be, that there will be people who, like, for some of there is no break for some people at the moment because I'm of the time they're here. They, oh. Yeah, and I think that that will come. But at the moment, the biggest thing that they can do is they're fighting for their lives in some of their businesses. And so, you know, you, the you last can... two weeks, I have not had time for meditation. No, but even, even... Sam stopping me from becoming a fat alcoholic. <laughs> um, because you know, I'm that one scotch. I'm that one scotch at night. Otherwise, but... I would. If I was single right now, I'd be a fat alcoholic. Just like even, even going as, board meetings. Even as simple, though, it doesn't have to be, you know, a 20-minute meditation. Even as simple as like you and I at the moment in our makeshift home office, you know, we've been uh, working together here and man, like our conversations, thank God my staff aren't here at the moment. Um, But even if it's just a matter of me walking out of this room, closing that door, having five very large breaths before, like compose myself before I get back in the room, and kill my husband yeah. um, <laughs> and his partner. You know, just trying to find that composure, and even that, even if that's in three breaths, mm. then just don't get so lost in. And I know it's hard because we're experiencing it day by day, but just try and keep that sanity for yourself. It's, it kind of reminds yeah. me of. Um, there's a really, really old video that was going around the internet about the mum that locked herself in the, in the pantry and she's recording herself saying, I just wanted to eat a treat. And she's like eating this lolly herself locked in her food pantry. And then all of a sudden, the little, the little kid is like the crack under the door is looking. He's like, I, I found you. <laughs> and she's in this pantry just being like, just one sane moment. <laughs> and then I'm going to go out there. It's the same type of thing. Like we can't escape to anywhere except another room right now. Yeah. So yeah. find solace in that other room if, if that's all you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world is taking your breath. And uh, there will be extreme challenge and already is that's arising out of that, but there will also be gifts uh, for each and every individual to find. Sammy C, Stewie Cook, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, undoubtedly, your example is a guiding light for so many. And so thank you for joining us and being so honest uh, with the conversation today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank cool. you so thank much you for the much invitation. For yeah. And thank you to Bradley, Jotzi, Leonie, um, who else have we got? Graham. Mr. Adam Boris is on the line. The GP, the doctor. He's tuning in from Adam, Thank you guys so much for tuning in and asking some questions. Hopefully we can address even some of those offline as well. Well done, team. We will absolutely be doing that. We will see you in the comments section, team. Stewie and Sammy, thank you for joining us. We'll chat to you soon. Ciao. <laughs>